Hi, and welcome to Behavioral Journal, where we take a look at what's happening now in our city. I'm Lindsay Paris, and later we're getting in the ring with the Inner City Boxing Club, meeting some new NECC graduates, and talking about what's new down at Gokey Park. But first, we're kicking off our In the Neighborhood series, where Haverhill's neighborhood associations take us through their corner of the city, sharing their history as well as what's in the works. Today, stunning homes, leafy streets, and classic elegance are king in our featured district, the Highlands neighborhood, where many of the city's grandest houses reside. Join us as we go on a tour with one of Haverhill's oldest and most established neighborhood groups, the Historic Highlands Neighborhood Association. Hi, my name is Linda Brown and I'm the president of the Highlands Neighborhood Association. We love living in the Highlands. It has so much history and architectural design and that's one of the reasons I know my husband and I moved here and one of the reasons why so many friends of mine that I've met in the neighborhood live here also. Basically the main reason why I moved here is because of the historic houses around the neighborhood. I love restoring old things. I'm enjoying every minute of it. We had uh, always wondered what exactly the what streets the Highlands encompass. So what, what happens, it runs from Main Street to Canoza to Mill down to Summer. Believe it or not, it's one of the smaller neighborhood groups in the city. But like I said, in this small space, there's a lot of history. I love living here just because of the architecture that you see everywhere. Everybody has been so warm and welcoming here. It's a really tight-knit community. The Highlands really started becoming a well-known neighborhood because of the fact that many of the shoe manufacturer owners lived in this neighborhood and built their homes here. In the late 1870s, some of the first homes were built. And then the house to my left here uh, was built, and I think in 1878, that was at the first house on um, Windsor Street. In those days, it was the custom to, as the more you prospered, that you would kind of move up the hill. That's why it's called the Highlands, because we, we are elevated up on the hill, and that's why a lot of those people moved into this area. When I tell people the house that we bought, uh, it, people say, oh, that's my favorite house in Haverhill. And uh, it's my favorite house in Haverhill. It was completed in 1915. It's a very cool, very unusual, colonial revival bungalow. It's long and spread out. The rooms go front to back, and we have a beautiful view of the lake. I'm gonna tell you first of all, I don't live in a Victorian. My, I live in a mid-century modern house, built in 1951. So, you know, a little bit contrary to what you see around me, but um, it definitely brings about a whole other type of history in the, in the Highlands. About 1976, you know, a lot of cities in America had gone through a lot of blight. A lot of these magnificent homes in this area had been cut up into apartments um, and just people who really didn't take care of them. So people who were living at the Highlands at the time and homeowners decided, you know, they had kind of gotten tired of seeing the neighborhood kind of crumble. So they formed the Highlands Neighborhood Association back in 1976. And they did so many things. They, they received grants from the city, from the state, and actually federal grants to come in and restore a lot of these beautiful homes. We really kind of credit a lot of what's been left here in the Highlands. A lot of these beautiful houses haven't been cut up yet to past organizations. They, they did a great job. So we want to kind of pick that back up and just continue the historic character of this beautiful neighborhood. We are currently standing in Windsor Park, and it's a great little park because we don't have to worry about so much traffic. It's, a, it's quiet up here, and so it's, it's just a great place to sit down and have a lot of functions. So this summer, each of us are hosting a different event, which, you know, is posted on our Facebook page. Mine that I'm working with Marianne on, it's kind of become our baby, is our School Without Walls program. It's a summer series um, full of story times and different events. I will be hosting one of the story times where parents come and they sit down and they engage with their children. Andy Vargas's mom, our councilman's mom, Veronica, it will be doing one bilingual, so it'd be great. So we'll be having one in Spanish and English. We're gonna do posters in the park, which is a, a wonderful thing that, since there's so much history up here in the Highlands, um, it's fun to find out like who built the homes, who, who lived in these homes, what's special about these homes. So what we've invited people to do is to do a brief history on the house. 
This is my house, this is 125 Arlington Street. And what I've done is gone to the Special Collections Library and there's tons of information on people's houses. People can go in by street and find their house and they can get some of these lovely photographs. And then what we want to do is have that at Windsor Park and we're going to display all these posters. And uh, last, Michael, is our yard sale. It's going to be Saturday, September 10th from 8 o'clock, and that's not going to be here in Windsor Park. That will be down in White's Park on Mill Street. So lots of fun things happening this summer in the Highlands. If you wanted to be a part of the Highlands Association, we just really want anybody to just come out, get their hands dirty with us, and protect the charm of our homes. We really need to make sure that our neighborhoods stay preserved, stay intact. You just take a walk around our neighborhood up here in the Highlands and you just kind of like open your mouth in awe. Some of these homes are just so magnificent and a lot of the history that goes along with it that you just can't take away. So we just want to continue that down through our neighborhood association and our time representing. Highlands residents have put in a massive effort to preserve not only their majestic homes, but the neighborhood as well, and they are doing a phenomenal job at it. Thanks to Linda, Mike, Marianne, and the rest of the association for their help. The Haverhill Inner City Boxing Club aims to teach its students not only the art of boxing, but how to apply the skills they learn in the sport to practical life. Their goal is to get kids into a productive structure and guide them to becoming their best selves. Journal correspondent Chris Bowden jumped into the ring to see the City Boxing Club students in action. The Inner City Boxing Club, it was, uh, it started in the ba back in the 90s uh, as Haverhill Boxing Club. Uh, it's opened and closed a few times. We threw 50 kids out into the street. Uh, back in 2012 uh, because we didn't have the funding for the club so we decided to bring the club back as Haverhill Inner City Boxing Club Youth Development and also to change the board of directors and um, start going for grants, get 501c3 to get the kids off the streets of Haverhill, give them a place to go teach them how to box. I was a, uh, uh, you know, inner city kid and, uh, you know, living in an urban community. Um, you know, you grow up a little bit faster than you should. I was uh, a little hellraiser in the school and um, a teacher took a liking to me and he noticed uh, that I was always getting into fights and he figured he'd ask me what sports that I like. I told him, you know, I, I used to watch boxing as a kid with my father. So I said, you know, I, I like boxing, but there was no boxing gyms in the city of Lawrence at that time. Some time passed by and he created a token economy which basically stated if I turned my, my grades around and I didn't fight in school, he would pay for me to join the boxing gym. And lo and behold, 13 years later, I'm still fighting. I'm the current New England heavyweight champion and the IBO international heavyweight champion as well. Uh, my role is just to uh, help you know some of the kids to train them, um, teach them how to box. Uh, work with them, just uh, managing the place. I like to get them off the streets, keep them out of trouble. Uh, I've always been involved with kids. Uh, just, I just don't like to see them out there fighting, getting in gangs. Uh, we just want to take them in here and just give them a place to go. We teach them respect anyway. Um, they need to respect people, not use the fighting out to the streets. Uh, we want them to compete if they can compete. If not, it's a good condition and program for them. It's definitely helped me build a lot of uh, a lot of strength and character. You know, um, living living in an inner city. Not that not that uh, by any means does does it knock you down or does it put you down. The people that I was surrounded by were mostly going on the wrong path. So I think uh, boxing for me has helped me out a lot in, in the sense that it's it's given me guidance and it's given me structure. I've, I've, I've lived the structured life for the last 13 years and it's due to boxing. The, the, the resources and, and, and the people that I've, that I've had put around me because of boxing has helped me out tremendously and has made me, uh, a big part of it has made me who I am today. Students can uh, benefit from uh, educational classes uh, what we're doing is just homework classes right now. We started up this year and we're working with some teachers from Haverhill High and also from Whittier Tech and what they're doing is um, they're going to try to do a GED program here uh, to try to get kids diplomas, uh, SAT prep classes, prep them for the SATs. 
I currently work at a school right now at the CDAES. It's a community day at Arlington School over in Lawrence. Uh, you know, it's a job I never saw myself doing because I hated school myself. I dropped out of high school uh, my sophomore year, ended up getting my GED, and I've been working there for two years now. And I work with uh, fourth grade students that that have basically that are on an IEP program. Those are the behavioral problems. So basically, I'm dealing with kids that were just like me. Yeah, it's a pretty welcoming group. I mean, just come on down. I mean, it, we help the kids get through, you know, their social skills and everything. Uh, you know, they're a little timid when they first come in here. And once they get to know people, they find the people they want to hang out with and everybody becomes like family here. You never know how strong you are until you're pushed up against a corner. You know, everybody wants to be tough. Everybody wants to play the tough, the tough, the tough role in life. But you don't know how tough you are until you're pushed up against a corner and you have somebody that's really trying to come down on you and all you can do is keep fighting. It's either sink or swim. It's made me who I am. It's made me a strong person and I can depend on myself. Even in the worst moments in life, I have the confidence to be to be de to be dependent on myself because of the scenarios and, and, and the circumstances that you have to actually put yourself through in boxing. Support the Haverhill Inner City Boxing Club by visiting HaverhillInnerCityBoxing.org to join, donate, or learn about upcoming shows and events. Northern Essex Community College held its 54th annual commencement ceremony last Saturday, May 21st. Over 1,000 beaming graduates received their diplomas, and the journal spoke with a few grads about what's next for their futures. I've had a lot of emotions today. I was crying, I was happy. You know, all of the hard work that I've um, put into my degree, really, it paid off today. And they kept talking about resilience and that really struck a chord with me because, um, you know, my journey through NECC wasn't an easy one. But to come out with high honors, and uh, it's just, it's a great feeling. Dana C. Richards. I feel amazing today. I can't believe that I graduated. I was walking across the stage and thought I was going to either burst into tears or pass out and it was the, the best moment probably this year. I decided to come to NICO because I didn't really know what exactly I wanted to do and it's 10 minutes from my house, it's affordable and I had friends who went there and had a good experience so I went there too. Um, yeah, I'd say I'm non-traditional, I'm 37 years old and uh, I went to Woody of Tech and graduated from Haverhill High but I was a welder and I ended up having a bunch of metal boxes fall on me so I could no longer weld. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Only when you give up have you lost the fight. I said in my speech, I didn't, I just wanted to get in, get done, get out. When I got here, from the very first day, I was walking on the quad and there were people playing football. I got involved, they were welcoming, they had me come in and play. Since then I just couldn't get enough of the school. I was a daycare teacher for a long time and then I, I had my own kids and I raised some foster kids and kind of maxed out on like the number of diapers. I knew I needed to do something else and I've worked in an office and I've worked with kids and I've kind of done a lot of things but um, I always loved to write. I got put into a um, journalism class just basically as an elective and I loved it and my very first story was on the front page of the student newspaper The Observer and I'm not gonna lie I like screamed and ran in the bathroom and called my dad I was like oh my god my story got friend I actually teach here at Northern Essex I'm a professor of chemistry and forensic science I have a PhD in organic chemistry but I decided to come back and enroll as a you know, brand new student um, for an associate's degree in liberal arts um, just to kind of see what would happen. So I took all different types of classes, you know, um, went through every step that a norm, you know, an, an incoming freshman would have to, to do. And finally, I've graduated. So. <laughs> 
seeing our students now, you know, most of them work multiple jobs, have kids, and so I thought, well, instead of just talking about it, I thought I'd actually try it out. I learned about how hard most of our students really do work, that they have so many responsibilities going on. Um, I'm a huge advocate for NACO. Um, you know, it's the place to come if you really need to re-energize your, your love for life and learning and to reinstill some hope in yourself. So I did get accepted to Boston University and Northeastern University and I'm trying to decide between the two right now. Um, they both have incredible journalism programs so I am hopefully going to be in Boston in the fall. I'm going to miss it so much but I'm going to still be taking a summer class so I'll, I'm not saying goodbye forever just yet. Actually before I even um, graduated I've, I'm already working as a freelance for um, the Daily News of Newburyport so it's, it's been the best decision I made. Once again, congratulations to all of our graduates. Congratulations to all the NECC graduates from HC Media. The full commencement ceremony will be broadcast on channels 22 and 99 and streaming at HC Media's website in early June. Miramax Street's Goki Parking Deck has got a new look, new sound, and fresh excitement this summer with the innovative arts and performance space created for the Goki Park Activation Series, where exciting events are happening Saturdays through May, June, and July. Coming up on Saturday, May 28th at 3 p.m. is the Community for Karma Project with live tribal drum playing, yoga, and meditation. June 11th, see Lindsay's Puppet Pals, a highly interactive and entertaining show featuring larger-than-life puppets at 3.30 p.m. and 4.45 p.m. By the way, that is another Lindsay, and she is awesome. But June 18th, I and the rest of the HC Media crew will be hosting a Poetry and Prose open mic event from 2 to 4 p.m. We're going to have poetry and spoken word readings, a giant interactive chalkboard, book exchange table, Haverhill Mad Libs, and more. So if you love writing and books, please come down. All of these great events are located on the lower level of the Goki parking deck on Merrimack Street, and they are all free and open to the public. If you have a story or event you'd like to see featured on the Haverhill Journal, call us at 978-372-8070 or email info at haverhillcommunitytv.org. And don't forget to like us on Facebook or at our HC Media YouTube channel. And that's what's happening in Haverhill the week of May 26th. I'm Lindsay Paris, and we'll see you next time.